January 2003. Professional snake handler and animal expert David Weathers was boxing up snakes in his snake room. A member of his team was taping him. As David tried to put a deadly Asian monocle cobra back in its box, the cobra struck. David had wrestled alligators and gotten up close with tigers. He was also licensed to keep venomous snakes at home. He'd handled snakes for 16 years without any problems. He's not letting me do it too well. He's trying to fight. We're loading up all the snakes, the cobras and all. He was handling them two or three at the same time, trying to put them in different boxes, getting them ready. I was just filming everything that was going on and uh, trying to just get a good documentary on all the snakes that he has in the snake room there. And when he went to put the monocle cobra away and... Oh, oh boy. He just got bit, and he, you know. I've seen him do this thousands of times and uh, didn't think nothing of it. In fact, when he first got bit, I didn't even realize what happened until I seen the look on his face. I'm bit. I'm, we gotta go to the hospital. Yeah, I squeeze a lot out. Rather than wait for an ambulance, David jumped into Albert's truck for the 15-mile ride to a hospital in Fort Myers. It was a risky decision. The bite of the monocle cobra is deadly. It eats through human tissue, destroying nerves and muscles, and entering the bloodstream to shut down organs. David needed antivenin fast. David insisted that the camera keep running. We had the camera set up in the back seat. And uh, every once in a while, I'd either reach back and grab it and try to point it at Dave, or he would do it when I was driving. Soon, David began to have trouble breathing. I could see that he was getting pretty nervous. I mean, his body, his hands were shaking. Uh, I seen the venom oozing out when he was squeezing his, his wound, and I knew that it immediately it started turning black. By the time David arrived at Lee Memorial Hospital, his voice was slurred, and his balance was uneven. David would surely die if he didn't get an injection of antivenin. But this hospital didn't have any. They had to call for help to Miami, 250 miles away. The call was answered by snake bite expert Captain Al Cruz. He maintains the state's most extensive collection of antivenin. Crews knew how deadly David's bite was. Monaco cobras cause thousands of fatalities in, in Asian continent every year. So I knew that I was dealing with a time bomb. The snake could kill him at any one moment, depending on how severe the, the bite was. In minutes, crews assembled the necessary antivenin and took a flight to Fort Myers. When he arrived, he was stunned to hear that David didn't want the antivenin. In fact, he wanted to leave the hospital. David was thinking he was fine and could walk out of the hospital because he did not have any apparent life-threatening symptoms. He was awake and alert. He was breathing without difficulty. But what he didn't know is that this snake venom was eating him up from the inside out at the cellular level. The venom was eating like acid deeper and deeper into David's abdomen. Snake venom, what it does is it breaks the bridge between your nerves and your muscles. So therefore, there's no connection in the two. Added the component of tissue destruction, you're basically bleeding to death internally. Crews set up an IV drip, and doctors administered 10 vials of cobra antivenin. All right, I'm Dr. Selman. By the following morning, David was out of danger. His blood had stabilized and his kidneys were fully functioning. After five more days in the hospital, the wound appeared to be healed and David went home. All right, I'm David Weathers. This is my first day out of the hospital. I got bit Thursday afternoon, five days ago by this particular cobra here. But soon, David took a turn for the worse. And I'd say maybe a Three or four days later, the wound started opening up. It was his muscles and his, his uh, flesh that was deteriorating, and he started getting this hole, and the hole just kept getting bigger and bigger every day. David watched his wound evolve into something frightening. I mean, this big 
thing that was in my stomach just burst and it, it all drained out. And I had a lot of skin left that was dead tissue. So over a period of a couple days, I slowly start cutting a little bit of that away. And I literally had a hole in my stomach that was about the size of a grapefruit. First thing I have to do is obtain the blood. Worried about infection, David went to see clinical specialist Emery Smith. I could see down to his intestine. He had a very, very bad infected wound. And I, if left untreated, could really uh, possibly even kill him. Smith was developing an experimental process to accelerate healing called platelet-rich plasma therapy, or PRP. Smith likens PRP to performing a surgical skin graft without the surgery. A gel concentrate is made from the patient's own blood. These are living cells. We'll then get a scalpel or a blade and we'll cut a specific design to the patient's own wound measurements. And then from there, we'll just pick it up off this Petri dish and we'll place it right directly onto the wound. Just one week after receiving PRP therapy, David's condition had improved dramatically. Turn around and let me see it. When I looked at David's wound on the seventh day and we took off that bandage, I was very surprised to see that the wound had come to about a 90% uh, rate of healing. There was uh, nothing there but a, a piece of scar tissue and a scab, just like you would see like if you scraped your knee. I couldn't believe, I mean, he healed up in a matter of days. David's wound disappeared more quickly than his memory of that painful night. After I got bit, I started feeling, feeling a tingling sensation under my skin. It felt like somebody had injected acid. I mean, it was just kind of burning. And I mean, I knew what was going on. Never knew, really knew what the, the actual pain was going to be like. And it started growing like on and on. It became, instead of a tingling sensation, then it became more of a throbbing, like somebody had a, a knife stabbed in my gut and it was just every 10, 15 seconds, they just twisted and twisted. I'm on my way there right now with a severe cobra bite. As he rode to the hospital, David made phone calls, wanting to talk while he was still able. It was a bad bite. I mean, a very bad bite. Hello. Hello. I'm, 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 I'm actually getting ready to go into respiratory failure. It's bad. I'm not going to talk anymore because I need to relax. And as we're driving to the hospital, the pain started getting a lot worse, and then it started turning black and just growing and growing and growing. Oh. Okay, you got to go. Go, go, go. Gotta go. We got to the hospital as fast as we could. By the time we got there, I kind of, at that point, I felt like I was drunk. I mean, staggering in. And that's when I thought, I'm gonna go unconscious. But hours later, David's pain was nearly gone. He told Al Cruz he didn't need antivenin. He's like, listen, you, you don't have more than an hour, or you're gonna die. He's like, your kidneys are not functioning. I'm like, oh, yes, I'm yeah, sure they are. It's like, here, give me something to go to the bathroom. I'll prove it right now. But I couldn't go to the bathroom. And I'm like, all right, well, what are we waiting for? Let's get some anti-venom in here. Come on. You know? <laughs> Today, David shows no ill physical effects from the bite. And he's back at the sanctuary fearlessly handling snakes. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I don't get them devenomized and things like that. And my, my biggest answer is I'm a venomous snake handler. And... Uh, my, my style of handling is really unorthodox. I mean, I, I use my bare hands with things, and I'm real comfortable doing it. We have a good relationship with snakes, I feel, or with animals in general. Unfortunately, I believe we're gonna see David again, not because he's careless, but because snakes are lightning fast. And even though you may think it can develop a sense of trust, I mean, everybody knows you can't trust a snake. The snake was doing its job, you know, snakes, venomous snakes get defensive, they bite. I can't be too mad, it's one bite in 16 years. Coming up, a bull rider takes the 